Are you interested in creating your own CSGO stickers? In that case, you came to the right place. My name is Viper, I'm a CSGO skin and sticker creator and in this tutorial I will be showing you how to create your own sticker. I have created this angry chicken sticker and I'll be showing you how I did it. If you're also interested in learning how to create your own CSGO skins, then you should definitely check out my skin tutorial, as well as subscribe to my channel for more useful CSGO and gaming related stuff. As I did with the skin tutorial, I will be using GIMP. GIMP is a great free and open source photo editing tool. I will write the download link in the description, but feel free to use any other software like Photoshop or Krita, because the same concept applies to other tools as well. The version of GIMP that I'll be using is 2.10.20. Beside GIMP, we will need the VTF edit and the SDK tools. The VTF edit tool is needed to convert our stickers into VTF files, which is the format required by Valve for workshop submissions. It can be downloaded from GameBanana.com. Again, I will post the link in the description. As for the SDK tool, it's a tool through which you can inspect your sticker and view how it behaves with different settings. In the tool, you can zoom in and out of the sticker, rotate it and change the lighting, as well as view the sticker on CS GO's weapons. You can get the SDK tool by downloading it from Steam. However, you will not be able to view this page or download the tool if you've never purchased CS GO's Prime status before. Those who bought CSGO several years ago already have the needed Prime status and will be able to get the tool. For anyone else, the Prime status needs to be bought from here. If you obtain the Prime status through gaming hours, you should still buy the status. Unfortunately, there is no way around it. But as they say, you gotta spend money to make money. There are four CSGO sticker types. Glossy, paperbacked, holographic and foil. The glossy and paper stickers are the basic ones and they're pretty much the same apart from the way they wear out. The glossy sticker will start disappearing and will reveal the weapon beneath it, while the paper sticker will show a paper background. The higher tiered stickers are the holographic and foil ones. The holo stickers change colors according to different lights, angles, and a certain color spectrum that the creator chose. The foil stickers are bumpy stickers that have height information, which is achieved through a normal map. In this tutorial, we'll be discussing glossy, hollow, and foil stickers. Paperbacked stickers are pretty much the same as the glossy ones, so I'll skip that type. In this video, I'll be talking about creating the glossy sticker, so if you have the tools downloaded and ready, we can get started. Open GIMP. Go to File and click on New. And set the width and height to 2048. You will be greeted with a white background. Feel free to delete it as we won't need it. Now I will import the layers of my drawing. When creating digital art in general, it's recommended that you separate your drawing in layers. This way you will have better control over the drawing. I have saved my layers into separate PNG files, and now I import them by going to File, Open Image as Layers. Now I have the layers stacked in GIMP. I numbered the layers ahead of time so that it will be easier to reorder them. For now, I will go ahead and hide the winged layer. I will need this one for the foil version. I will also hide the feathers layer, but I will be using it shortly. Next thing we need to do is to add the alpha channel. The alpha channel controls how the sticker looks when it's worn out and how fast different areas wear out. The darker the alpha values are in a certain area, the harder it is for that area to wear out. First thing we'll do is to create a new layer from visible. Right click on the top layer in the list and choose New from Visible. This will create a new layer that contains the current visible picture in the session. So if we hide our layers, we'll see that nothing changes. Now by toggling the visibility of the visible layer, we can see that it contains the full picture. Next, we need to create a mask for the visible layer which will contain the alpha values. Right click on the visible layer and choose Add Layer Mask. In the dialog, choose white. And now we need to select the areas we want to keep when the sticker wears out. I want the sticker to look like this, which looks like the chicken got shot and only the sign, hand, feet and some feathers remain. So let's hide the visible layer for now and show the sign, hand and feet layers. Right click on the feet layer and choose new from visible. 
This new layer will make it easier for us to select all the relevant components for the mask. With the newly created visible layer chosen, choose the fuzzy select tool from the toolbar at the left and click on an empty area in the canvas. Now we have selected the empty area. So in order to invert the selection, press Ctrl I. And now we have selected all the visible components. Let's also add the feathers to the selection. I'll show the feathers layer and with the layer chosen, I'll change the tool to select by color and click on one of the black lines of the feathers. Now the outlines of the feathers have been added to the selection. Let's hide all the layers now. We can toggle the main visible layer back on and start assigning the alpha values. According to Valve's documentation, the valid alpha values are between 30 and 255. As I mentioned earlier, the lower the values, the slower those areas will wear out. So let's choose a dark gray above 30. Make sure that the mask layer is selected. You can make sure of that by verifying that the square next to it is highlighted. Choose the color fill tool. Now when we click on one of the selected areas, all the areas will be colored and will become transparent. Now is a good time for us to save our work. Hit Ctrl S and give your file a proper name. We'll also need to export our image into a TGA file. So press Ctrl Shift E and set the file extension to TGA and click save. And with this, we're done with GIMP for the glossy sticker. Open the VTF edit tool in order to save a VTF version out of the TGA file we've just exported. Both the VTF and the TGA files need to be submitted to the workshop. Click on the blank page icon and navigate to the folder where you save the TGA file and choose the file. In the options dialog, set the width and height to 1024 and keep everything else the same. Now we can see the image with the alpha values in effect. If you don't see transparency, then check that the mask is enabled under view. Everything looks good, so I can go ahead and save the file. And this concludes the first video in this tutorial. In the next video, I will create the VMT file for the glossy sticker and go over the SDK tool and its settings.